Good morning. I am Stephen Westlake and I'm Chief Executive of the Royal Statistical Society. We are immensely proud to be partnering with Open Innovations on this important new project, Leveling Up with Open Data. Um, now, the Royal Statistical Society's foundational charter back from the 19th century commits us to the very glorious Victorian aim to correct, arrange, digest and publish facts illustrating the condition and prospects of society in its material, social and moral relations. And I think harking back to that kind of rather noble mission, it's hard to think of a more pressing example of something that illustrates the material, social and moral relations of the UK than the imbalance in prosperity between parts of the southeast of England and much of the rest of the country. Um, this is something that has recently broken through to the government's agenda, but I think it's something that many of us have considered to be a serious issue for quite some time longer than that. Now, the RSS is one of the foundational members of what we call the Economic Statistics Working Group, working um, with the LNS, the Society for Business Economists, the Royal Economic Society, um, and a host of other partners. Um, and through that, we think there is an important role that we can play in bringing together people with an interest in data and statistics to try and address these kind of economically and socially vital questions. Um, we're thrilled to have people like Andy Haldane, who we'll be hearing from later, and Neil O'Brien, who's involved in this project, to really provide some of the government and political insight into what's going on. But we're especially proud to be doing this work with Open Innovations, who I think as much as anyone can be said to have pioneered this agenda. I know when I was working in government back in 2017, 2018, um, Tom Forth's voice on this, really asking hard questions about our, the balance of public R&D funding or public transportation funding across different parts of England was like a wake up call to a lot of us in government. And um, I think I could say honestly that Tom is one of the few people who um, has changed my mind on Twitter about something through the, the forceful presentation of data and of evidence. Um, with that in mind, I think it's really important to think about how levelling up is a classic example of um, an area where data has historically been poor. We've really underinvested under in local economic data. There are some exceptions. The old regional development authorities did some data investment. Obviously, they were abolished um, over a decade ago. Um, the Scottish government, as it's gained power through devolution, has invested much more in economic statistics and arguably has been able to push a stronger economic policy story as a result of it. But for the most part, um, historically, we focused on national economic performance rather than this more politically relevant local economic performance. Um, people who have been plugging away at this for years include people like the Centre for Cities, so I'm very glad to have Paul Swinney here talking today. Um, and it's really great to see the Office of National Statistics um, really putting firepower behind this initiative. And again, we'll hear from Sam Beckett later about some of the things we're doing. But um, all of this highlights the importance of good data. But I think we would go so far as to say that it's not just good data that's important. Data doesn't have, just have to be good. It needs two other things as well. And those two things are pluralism and openness. Um, pluralism in the sense of a wide range of sources of data and a wide range of people involved in putting together those data and making sense of them. Um, I think it's important that if we're talking about economic growth in the north or in other parts of England outside the southeast, um, it's important that the voices of people who are not based in Westminster are prominent in terms of gathering the data, understanding the data and driving that agenda. Um, this is good for aligning incentives, it's good for stopping people overlooking things, and it's good for putting an end to what can be a very Westminster-centric perspective that we have. But the other vital characteristic and why we're so keen to be partnering with Open Innovations on this is the importance of openness itself. Um, I think this is particularly important when we're dealing with such a politically sensitive issue as levelling up, something that is matters a lot to a lot of voters and is explicitly a big part of the government's political agenda. Openness is good in that it increases the number of sources of data that we can put together. There's often wisdom in underexposed source of data that were otherwise hard to put together. 
It is good in terms of encouraging original approaches to data analysis, so bringing to bear insights from statistics, from data science, from businesses that are used to dealing with data sets. I think that's an incredibly powerful approach and one that Open Innovations have pioneered. And, but most importantly, it plays a powerful role in keeping us honest politically. Um, there is always the danger to lean on the scales. There's always the danger to do things in the dark to generate the right data results. Um, openness is an incredible disaffected against that. And that's why this tool that Open Innovations are putting together, a genuinely open tool to assess leveling up, I think will be very much in the public interest, but also in the interests of good data as well. Um, I will leave it there, but we are really keen to be supporting this project and we um, hope that in due course we will have some really startling and interesting results. Thank you very much.